Hey everybody, welcome to Chan's Logic, episode... 19. How did you even know? I don't know. Well, this is episode 19, we're back. Stella's walking all over the place, she's out of control. I got back from the Netherlands last week. <clears throat> it was a pretty exciting trip, I went down there with Mr. Dave. We gave a talk to a bunch of affiliate owners up at CrossFit Leiden about long-term branding, sustainable marketing, business practices, how to pay staff, and a bunch of other pretty exciting topics. We had a good time. Heineken tastes better over there, if you were wondering. Wonderful. Yeah. Glad you drank a lot of Heineken while you were there. You got to you gotta experience the culture a little bit, and mm. Heineken's basically local. Mm. So today, in episode 19, what we want to talk about is the, the laws of marketing that we've kind of been building and developing, and this has been a little bit of time and development and stuff we've been working on for probably what the last year or so we wanted to really identify and define some actual parameters around marketing we'll call them laws because if you call something a law everybody's going to be super pumped about it and want to follow it because it's a freaking law right 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 Steph yeah <laughs> stop looking at me okay. weird she's out of control so when we look at the laws of marketing, they're built around long-term sustainable practices. We don't care about the short term. Uh, we don't care about what's going to happen tomorrow. We care about making plan a plan of action and strategies that are going to last and help us survive three, six, nine, twelve, and months from now and longer. And that's what these are built around. So law, law number one that we want to put out is you have to actually execute on what you're going to do. So I think a lot of people in both business and in life and all over the place talk about what they want to do. They often tell people about how bad they want it. They talk about how someone had a great idea that they didn't get to participate in because they didn't actually do it. And so I think we need a little less talking and a, little, and a lot more action. Is that a song? Yeah, something a like that. A little less talking, a Don't lot more talk action. It. No, it's a country song by Alan Jackson. Yeah, I know. Oh. I was saying don't talk about it. Oh. Oh, it is Taco Tuesday. Yeah. So outside of that, execute means actually do stuff. So rather than having 5,000 different ideas, let's pick like 10, 10 mm -hmm. a month that you're going to actually execute on or even 10 a year or ten. one a year. It doesn't That's even matter. Just execute on something. So make it, make it happen, actually do it and follow through with it. And that's what law number one is all about. Actually doing what you're talking about doing and follow through with it. So don't just talk, do a lot more action. Somebody go share that song on my page, too, because now it's going to be my head for three days. Oh, God. And I'm going to sing it, and Steph's going to love it. No. Okay, so law number two is it kind of it branches off of law number one. So what we like to do in addition to talking too much is we're not consistent when we do stuff. So Guilty. We, uh, so a lot of people like to start something and never actually finish it or have 4,000 different things going on, but not, but they actually don't continue to do what they're doing. So, for example... Say you start a, a podcast or a content series or something on like Facebook this. or social media like this. You do three episodes and then nobody hears from you in like six months. What's up, Dave? He just joined. Oh, God. It's good to have you. Ugh. So uh, <laughs> when we're consistent with something, it means that we're going to do it. We're going to develop a plan of action around it. And then we're going to make sure we actually continue to do it for a year or longer. This has been like a year. This podcast? <laughs> I know. Like, we're only on 19. <laughs> we're doing really well with this thing. Like, okay, for the past month, it was like once a week, then it turns into once every other week, then once a month, but we're back on track and back in action. You've but been out of town. As a side note, if you what? follow my SoundCloud account, which is soundcloud.com forward slash Chan's Logic, I post stuff almost every day. Mm -hmm. Without but, me being involved, yeah, I'm the hardest, problem. Steph doesn't like to talk very much. That's true. And you force me to do these things. Yeah. And she makes me talk louder because I have a soft voice. That's <clears> true. <throat> he talks like a sissy. A sissy? She was <laughs> going to say a girl, but that's not okay. Because I talk loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when we talk, so law number two is be consistent. So when you start something, continue to do it, follow through with it, and don't actually stop doing it. The biggest thing that stops people is they talk too much and they don't actually follow through and they're not consistent with what they're doing. So if you can actually make number one and two happen, you're a step ahead of everyone else in terms of your marketing and even if you're even in your life. Every, nobody's consistent with anything. Nobody actually yeah, does anything. Like my diet. Yeah. And weight loss. 
That's a roller coaster. Yeah, Steph's all over the place with that. <laughs> She's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> but Vegas is coming up, so oh yeah, there's a lot of fit people. Dave, you gotta you gotta get that mediocre uh, roast Pizza. beef sandwich bot under control. <laughs> that was good roast beef in Boston, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> Vegas is coming. <laughs> yeah, we'll be at the Mad Lab Summit in Vegas coming up pretty soon, and we got we got to get beach ready for the pool party. Yeah. So let's look at, so law number one is execute, number two is be consistent, and then law number three is listen. And what we mean by listen is you can't just put information out, you can't just talk about you all the time. You have to listen and interact with your client base or your customers or your consumers followers. and your followers and all of those people because if you listen to them, you can develop an idea of whether or not they like what you're doing. And if they don't like what you're doing, they're going to tell you about it, and they're going to say, well, you kind of suck at this. And then rather than getting offended or butthurt about it, actually take it to heart and say, all right, well, is this person a troll? If they are, all right, then we don't, who cares? But number two, if they are actually making sincere comments and actually giving you feedback, you need to take that to heart and actually utilize that moving forward. Because if you don't pay attention to people's feedback, you're never going to evolve and you're never going to move forward. Someone said in, um, I think it was like the Drinking Brothers Business Group, your ego will be the biggest contributing factor to your demise. You don't have an ego. I don't have an ego. I don't even care. <laughs> Next. Okay, so number four is building a culture of caring. You're supposed to care. You're supposed to care. Oh, dang it. I ruined number four already. <laughs> okay, so number four is building a culture of caring. And so... <laughs> what this means is when we're doing our marketing and we're putting out information, the intended goal needs to not be to sell people or to get trick people into clicking on a stupid link or getting a ClickFunnels account so you can tell all your friends to do it and then make commissions based off that. It's, it's not about the short-term gain for these stupid financial benefits. It's the fact that you actually care about giving information, you actually care about your intended consumer, and you actually care about them being better at life or being better at whatever you're trying to help them with without asking for anything in return. Right, Steph? Yeah. <laughs> and so if you build that culture of caring around your whole business, your whole identity and your brand, people are actually going to want to follow what you're doing. They're going to enjoy what you're doing. And when you do put out a call to action, when you do ask for something or you do say, hey, come in and try this out or check out this new t-shirt we made or whatever, they're going to be more inclined to want to buy it. They're going to be more inclined to want to wear it. They're going to be more inclined to want to share it because you've shown that you care enough about them to where they've developed a strong relationship with you. That was like a poem. I it should had a, a lot of rhyming. I should be a poet. That's my deaf poetry. Build a culture of caring because you ain't be swearing. No, you didn't even say that. Oh. You said something about caring and then sharing, but I was only half listening, so I can't. Spit it back out to you. Sorry. Oh, well, good thing we'll watch it later. We'll watch it later. <laughs> so number five. This one's fun. I tell people this all the time. And this, each one of these laws is seemingly building on the other one, even though it wasn't necessarily intentionally written that way, but I'm realizing this right now. Way to go. Is number six is focus on where the attention is at. Wait, or, you forgot the I mean, five. Dang, I skipped number five. So number five is play the long-term game. <laughs> And so what that means is, and like I was saying with number one and number two, it's it's not like, what can I do to get people to click on my stupid baby link tomorrow and buy something right now? It's how can I develop a long-lasting relationship, build people to a point where they trust me and care about me, and then I can get them to come in and purchase my product because they want to, not because I'm tricking them to do it and they're going to have buyer's remorse later. That's sleazy sales. That's sleazy marketing. And that's why this industry gets a bad rep. And what it needs to be is, it needs to be focusing on how can I get this done in 12 months. If you have to focus on what can I do tomorrow, you've already failed. You're already going to have to do the clickbait stuff. So you need to thrash that, pick, up, pick yourself up, wipe yourself off, and focus on that long-term game. Think about what can I do 12 months from now and how can I map out this 12 months to make sure this works effectively versus how am I going to survive tomorrow. Content strategy for the long term. That's right. Set up your content strategy to build a relationship over the course of 12 months or longer. You'll develop a brand. You'll develop culture around your brand. You'll develop an identity around your brand. And then people will care and trust your brand, which is what's important. I think we're missing trust in a lot of brands mm -hmm. in today's economy. And we can't have misplaced trust because then the consumer doesn't trust us and they think everything is a sales process. Mm -hmm.
okay, let's not get off topic. Content calendar strategies is like uh, a few episodes back. Yeah, what was that, episode 13? I have no idea. Well, if you need help with content calendar stuff, go back at, uh, like four episodes and check out the content calendar episode, and it'll talk about how to build it. I also have a blog, translogic.com forward slash news forward slash content calendar, something like that. Just Google it, <laughs> and you'll be able to find it. And now I'll teach you how to actually build your content calendar and how to develop it and do all that stuff. Let's see. Number six. Number six, focus on where the attention is at. So when we look at small businesses and we look at what we're doing, we have a limited ability to get ourselves out there because we have limited staff often, we have limited capabilities, limited budgets, we're always limited by something. So what we really need to do is figure out where our ideal customer is at and that's where we need to put our full attention. And it might be one thing, it might be two things, it might be three things, it might be five things, but what you need to do is focus on that specific parameter to where your customer is actually at and to where people are paying attention to what you're doing. And to do this, you really need to understand your audience demographics. So like, who are you talking to? What kind of person are they? Are they male or female? How old are they? What, where are they at? Are they in school? Are they in college? Are they professionals? Once we can develop and understand these buyer personas, then we can kind of leverage where our people are actually at and get that attention on there. So for example, if you are targeting high school kids, you probably want to be on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. That's all that matters. Facebook's for old people is what they tell us. Mm -hmm. That's why we're on it. That's right. We're old. <laughs> I turned 30 that's recently. That's what they always say. <laughs> they always tell us we're old, so that's why we're on Facebook. Yep. And so if you're looking at Facebook, it's the largest network. You're going to probably have some sort of presence there. What you need to do is... Set yourself up. You know Facebook's going to be your 30 and older crowd. You're going to be able to capture all of those people. Facebook is capturing a lot of the attention from LinkedIn. So you can catch the professional crowd on there as well. So if you're looking at like Snapchat, you know you're looking at the 27 and under crowd. Those kids are diehard. It's a niche platform and they love it. They're not going to switch to anything else. They haven't yet, even with Instagram stories coming out. In fact, one That's of the like kids told old me. old people. Yeah. Snapchat. Well, one of the kids told me that Instagram stories is Snapchat for old people. And <laughs> Those so, little turds. So there's that. So really understand your audience demographics. If you need to learn about buyer personas, go to my blog, chanslogic.com. Just Google chanslogic buyer personas, and we literally we map out how to build it, how to identify, and how to understand who they are. So once you understand that and you understand the difference of the platforms and who's on what platforms, now you can focus where your attention is at. And so it might be Facebook and Instagram, it might be Snapchat and Twitter, it might be whatever it is, you're going to want to be on the one where the most people are at, especially if you have limited time and limited budget. Right? Yep. <laughs> okay, so number seven, leverage your strengths. Uh, this is a big one for me. When you look at Steph and I, I'm more <laughs> visionary oriented. I know what I want to happen. I know how I want it to happen, but I'm not necessarily systems oriented. So Steph, I'll say, hey, this is what I want to happen. Check out this horrifying thing I wrote on the whiteboard. This is how I want it to work, and this is the structure it should look like. Okay, can you build stuff for me? Yep. And then Steph will go in the background and build the systems and build the ideas and build the technical stuff that we need to make it work optimally. And this is a perfect example of law number seven, leverage your strengths. And what this is, is we, we often hear, focus on your weaknesses, build your weaknesses, and you'll mm -hmm. become one with the sailor, Padawan. That didn't make any sense. That made no sense. So, but what, what so I that's think not is, a strength of yours. when I look at that, <laughs> it's, it's not, if I focus on my weaknesses, it's going to take me seven hours to figure something out versus if I focus wholly on my strengths, it's going to take me minutes to get things throughout the day. I'm going to be a lot more productive. I'm going to get a lot more done. And I'm going to be a lot more better at what I do. A lot more better. A lot better. <laughs> we'll, we'll focus on proper grammar during this. And, Anyways. And so if, if we focus on our strengths, we're a lot more we're a lot more productive. We are better. Good job. And we're capable of getting a lot more done in a shorter mm -hmm. period of time. Whereas if you try to do everything, you're going to get bogged down. You're going to get frustrated. And you're not going to want to be consistent. You're going to want to quit what you're doing. So what you do is you know what you're good at. If you don't know anybody who does what you're not good at, find someone, pick them up, make them your best friend. Oh, we're best friends? No. Oh. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's okay. I test her. Ew. <laughs> Gross. 
Okay, so that's leveraging your strengths. We know what we're good at. I'll be the first person to tell you what I'm not good at. Uh, Steph will be the first person to tell you she doesn't like to be on camera, but I'm forcing her to right now. <laughs> but we both we play off each other really well because we know what we're good at. We know what we're not good at. We don't even talk about what we're not good at to each other. We just know the other person's going to do it. Yep. Like when I have to... The first couple of times I was putting the podcast up, oh, I broke it every God. single time, and Steph would have to go fix it. I taught him real quick. Yeah, now I'm good at it. <laughs> so that I didn't have to fix it every time. <laughs> so, law, so now we're coming up into our last three laws. Number eight, nine, and ten are what I call my pillars of great content, or my pillars of developing a humanistic connection with people via your content. What do you think about that? You lost me after pillars. Oh, you're a pillar. <laughs> <laughs> so when we look at the three pillars of great content, it's not oriented around selling. It's not oriented around tricking people. It's not oriented around any kind of any of the stupid things you see, your click-through rates or any of that stuff. All the three pillars of great content are, number eight is inspire people. So when you think about a person's life, when they wake up, they probably have to get their kids dressed who are screaming and running all over the place. They probably have to drop them off at school. They're probably late for work. They're probably running around all over the place and they get home and they're just like, mother of God, I need to rest. So most people, when they wake up on Monday, they aren't super excited and super pumped and super happy about what the day is going to hold for them. And so law number eight is inspire people. So what you need to do in your content is post a video or a, a picture with text on it once a week, twice a week, however many times you feel like you need to and ba base this off of how your audience is reacting to it, but focus on inspiring people through positivity. There's a lot of negativity out there and if we can showcase positivity, build positivity and get positivity in front of people, they're going to react positively to that. That was another death poetry moment. Not good. Man. So that's why there's like Motivation Monday because that's when most people are like, oh crap. It's Monday, and then they need that motivation. Um, and then, like, Wednesday sometimes you can use as a motivational thing, even though it's, like, hump day. But um, Wednesday's, like, we're almost there, like, halfway through the week. You're going to make it kind of thing. So you can use Wednesdays as a, mo as a motivational kind of time frame also. That's true. Exactly. Inspire people through positivity and motivate them, and they'll love you forever. Try to inspire them through negativity, and you'll eventually be hated. So focus on positivity. Mm -hmm. Number nine. This is the second pillar of great top content, but the number nine law of marketing. Educate people. So what we need to do is we need to realize that you might think you have the greatest product in the world, the greatest idea, the greatest brand, the greatest whatever, but if you don't educate people on why, they're not going to care about it, and they're not going to understand it. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by educate is... Give them a lot of value. Make them feel special. Showcase what you do is really cool. It's unique. It has an identity and a culture behind it. And then people will want to come and see you. They'll feel like, oh, man, you've helped me out so much to this point. I've, I've been watching a lot of your videos. My shoulder doesn't hurt anymore because of your videos. Or I really learned a lot about marketing and it turned my business around. That kind of stuff is what really needs to happen with our educational components. So if we're in the fitness industry, it's, how do I fix shoulder pain? How do I fix low back pain? How, what can I do to eat healthy on the go? How can I read a menu at a restaurant and be healthy when I don't know what I'm doing? Maybe it's the skinny tacos at Cheesecake Factory. Maybe it's not choosing the Caesar oh, dressing in your God. Caesar salad. It's that kind of stuff. Or maybe if it's in marketing, it's here's how you put content out to educate people and help people. And the idea behind it is give, give, give without asking. You can ask later, but you're going to have to have a strong relationship to actually ask. We have to do skinny tacos at Cheesecake Factory now because Chandler here came back from Amsterdam and was like, I'm fluffy. And actually, I'm being nice and saying that he said he's fluffy. He came back and said, I'm fat. And I was like, well, you're not, but yeah, I okay. Yeah. I decided I wasn't beach body ready for the Mad Lab. So, summer. I mean, there's that. But what, you gained a whole, like, four pounds? Kilos. Oh, wait, maybe four pounds. You're a 69. You weighed 74. Oh. See? Oh. But I'm already down to 71, everybody. Yeah. So, in good like news. Five days, he gets back down to, whatever. Not Dave, fair. Dave says ever. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Dave. Now I have to listen to him say, I'm fat. I can't eat fat. I'm fluffy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm really strict when I get committed to it. It's, 
actually to the point where it irritates me sometimes. He did this one time for a month. He ate salads everywhere we went. And I said, Chan, where do you want to go eat? And he said, the food store. And I said, which food store? That's the other thing that irritates me. So now I say, what food store do you want to go eat at? And he goes, the salad store. <sighs> so there's that. Anyways, so, so we have to go celebrate Taco Tuesday on the Skinny Licious menu. We're going to eat skinny tacos. Yep. Because we want to be skinny, yo. Yeah. I'm not buff yet. i got to get skinny <laughs> for the Mad Lab Summit. <laughs> I'm in charge of the pool party. Me and Caffeine and Kilo. So we got to yep. make it a lot of fun. Give a lot of value to people. Yeah, home. Dave. You're, you're part of this, too. Dave's the MC. Yeah, so he's got to be in his bathing suit. Oh, that's true. And Dave, get rid of the... bring your best two-piece. <laughs> And you two <laughs> can go uh, be hooligans, dumb and dumber together. It's good times. Vegas is going to be great. If you guys are down there, you should definitely check it out if you're in the area. The Mad Lab Summit's always a good time. They say business in the front, party in the back. And they really hold true to that, that regard. What did he say? Getting skinny over here. He's good job, skinny. Dave. Yeah, Tara has him on a diet, too. She told me he couldn't even eat roast beef when we were there. We went anyway. <laughs> And you went anyways. <laughs> yeah. Busted. Yeah, because it's supposed to be the best roast beef in the world. Huh. And what's it? Oh, oh gosh. That's Stella. Mm -hmm. She sounds a lot worse than she is. No. Okay, so last piece of our mm -hmm. Pillars of Great Content and our 10th law of marketing is you have to make people laugh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So a lot, of, a lot of what we put out is serious, it's inspirational, <laughs> does all this, but when you think about what people want to do, they want to laugh and they want to showcase to their friends that they're funny and what's going on is funny. And when you see something hilarious, you want to share it with someone immediately. You want to tag your friends in it. Like the other day, there was a taco pizza. It was pizza with tacos on top. And someone shared it on my Facebook wall. And then after the person shared it, another person tagged me in it because they found it hilarious and thought I would find it funny. And I think another thing that's really important with this is self-depreciating humor. You can... It's okay to make fun of yourself. It's okay to make fun of what you do. It's okay to, to do that kind of stuff. And we talk about professionalism a lot. And being a professional is being a master of your craft. But it doesn't mean that you have to be this like uptight person walking around like this all the time. You can, you can have a little fun with it. You can have a good time. You can be exciting. You can call yourself a dumb dumb. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all in good fun. And people are going to emotionally be attached to that because they're going to feel like, oh, man, they're not these perfect people. They have fun. They eat pizza. They Run around and fall over. We eat over lots and, of pizza. Yeah, we do. However, Eclipse Pizza here in Reno um, has amazing cauliflower crust pizza. So now we've gone there like three times in the last week. That's true. It's delicious. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It works. They also started Paleo Pizzas a while back where it's just a pepperoni crust. So Yeah, that's wonderful. We've always liked the Eclipse Pizza Place. It's delicious. Way to go, Dave. Fish, so, not Picardi. Yeah, fish. He did that. <laughs> he did that. So the last law, number 10, make people laugh. And a couple examples of what we, we've done in in the gym is our Minute with the Intern series. They have a minute. They just, they, they're ridiculous on camera. They're out of control. But it's our most popular series. People love it. People watch it. Everybody reacts to it. People share it. Uh, organically, it gets more views than anything else because it showcases that they're people, that they're humans, that they... They have little, little quirks. They're out of control. They have to think things up that don't make any sense sometimes. And that's actually mostly like Minute with the RJ. Minute with the RJ and Alyssa stands there. And, Al <laughs> and Alyssa makes guest appearances. Yeah, yeah. Last but, time she asked why she was even there. Yeah, but RJ is hilarious. He is totally off the wall. Half of everything that he says does not make any sense. But everybody loves him, so mm -hmm. it's really funny. Yeah, and yeah. people love him because he's okay with making fun of himself and having a good time and being, and a, being dumb -dumb. a personal boy. Yeah, and being a dumb dumb. <laughs> and standard people are dumb dumb sometimes, and they like to have fun with it. And so you can't you can't connect with people if you don't showcase that you're a person as well. Mm -hmm. Chandler and Dave, when they're together, on the phone, on meetings, on webinars, they are like dumb dumb We're hilariousness. The dynamic duo. That's true. Yeah. There are twins. There are literally twins. East Coast, West Coast twins. One's white, one's brown. brown yes. <laughs> Someone told me I was white the other day. Well, oh, gosh, we've been working on that. <laughs> so just think about it. Like when even in these shows, we we make fun of ourselves. We have fun. This isn't super formal. It's just we're here. We're having fun with it, and 
this is what we do. It, it builds the humanistic connection like we talked about. So make people laugh. Don't be afraid to make fun of yourself because you'll build an emotional connection with people. So that's our laws of marketing. We, I've been building this up for about the last year. I think I have a video on each individual piece. Now we have a podcast on this. And now I'll make another video on each individual piece. I have oh, yeah. most of them. I think we, we only really need an attention video. We got it down. If you guys want a copy of this or you want a written format, just shoot me an email, chandler at stoneagefuel.com. And I will type up an email or I'll make, I'll make a blog and outline these and I'll put this up as like a show notes for it. Just shoot me an email if you want to see that. <clears throat> In summary, our laws of marketing are, one, execute. Don't just talk. Two, be consistent. Don't be a quitter. Three, listen because listening is important. Four, build a culture of caring. You have to care about people if you want people to buy your stuff and you want, if you want people to continuously buy your stuff. AKA, don't be a scumbag marketer. <laughs> Number five, play the long-term game. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't put yourself in a position to where tomorrow is important. Put yourself into a position to where 12 months from now is what's important. And you're looking at that. 12, 24, 36, and you know what's going to happen. You've got your plan mapped out. Obviously, it's going to evolve over time, but you need to have, be in that mindset. Number six, focus on where the attention is at. If you try to market to everything, you'll market to nothing. So focus on where the attention is at, know where your client base is based off buyer personas, and then focus on that as your whole regard. Number seven, leverage your strengths. Focus on what you're good at, find someone who's good at what you're not good at to do that for you. <laughs> Number eight, inspire, now these are the last three, the pillars of great content. Number eight, inspire people. Inspire them and motivate them through positivity. Number nine, educate people. Educate them, uh, kind of give them information based off what you do, help them, give them value, don't ask for anything in return. And number 10, make them laugh. If you wanna build an emotional and a humanistic connection with people, you have to make them laugh on occasion. You have to be funny, don't be afraid to make fun of yourself. And those are the 10 laws of marketing. That's pretty exciting. Chan's logic laws of marketing. <laughs> These aren't just typical laws. <laughs> it's Chan's yeah. logic. These are like... Chan's nonsense logic. Until today, these were GS14 classified. So everybody who's listening to this now Dave. knows. All <laughs> 16 listeners. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, if you need help or if you want these mapped out on paper, shoot me an email, chandler at stoneagefield.com, and I'll send them over to you. I'll make a blog about this as well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do like this podcast, leave us a review. If you're on the podcast, leave us a, a nice review or a terrible review if you don't like us. Either way, we're going to listen to it. We're going to pay attention, and then we're going to react off that. So we love to hear information. We love to hear how people like this, and it really helps us out a lot if you leave a review or if you just email us and tell us how you liked it or how much you didn't like it. What do you think, Steph? Yawn. Yawn. Are you yawning or crying? Well, a little both. It's okay. And then my nose got itchy. We built that humanistic connection <laughs> in this episode. Why are you touching me? Because you're crying. No. Oh. <laughs> because I care. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this. See you next week. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>